Hey, thanks. This question's for Elias. Um, just your thoughts on the performance of a guy like Tyler Mott in the game yesterday and what it means to you guys who, you know, are, are counted on to produce at the top of the lineup when you get depth scoring to help you out as well in a big game like that. Uh, I love to see it. Uh, Motter, he eats pucks, he works hard, he lays hits. So, And yesterday he scored two goals. So I was super happy for him because uh, he deserves it. Next up, we have Farhan Lalji, TSN. Yeah, for either Troy or Jordy, you guys both saw a little bit of time against uh, the, the O'Reilly line. What do you think is a group you did so effectively against them? Go ahead. Uh, I think we just tried to limit time and space. Um, games three and four, he obviously got super hot, and it's a dangerous line, and they're really good players for a reason. They're going to get their chances, but I think for us uh, last night, we just – uh, wasn't just on the one forward line and matched against some of the two D men out there. It was kind of five guys playing as a unit and trying to limit time and space and advancing puck to the zone quickly. Next up, we have Ed Willis, Post Media. Sorry, hey, Jordy. Um, a lot was made about Jacob's performance, uh, especially in the second period, and, and, and rightfully so. But, you know, in addition to the saves, is that the way he was making the saves that really started to energize your team, the way he was throwing his body around, uh, you know, flying out again when the puck bounced off the referee, and, and also the way he was playing the puck. Did, did you guys start to feed off that? Yeah, I mean, when Marky's playing like that, it, it, it fires the bench up for sure. Um, it's the same as when uh, guys make a big block shot, like uh, Tanny's eating pucks, and like uh, Petey said about Motter. Um, when, uh, when Marky's doing those things, it's, it's pretty incredible to see that a human being can make saves like that. So, I mean, it fires us up. Ian McIntyre, Sportsnet. Hi, Elias. Uh, do you feel that the line changes last night made it harder for, for St. Louis to match and did you feel like you found a little more space and had a little more of the puck last night than some earlier games? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we got a little jump when we mixed up the lines. I think, um, yeah, I don't know why, but um, it felt good and it felt like we had a good jump. We got some zone time and we scored um, two goals to tie the game and then uh, Motter again with a break wiggle. Greg Wyszynski, ESPN. Hey, thanks a lot. Hey, uh, Jordy, uh, just wanted to follow up on a conversation we had before uh, bubble time about uh, having a newborn and uh, pulling off this whole thing. How, how has it been? What's your been your sort of connection back to family back home? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously just uh, FaceTime every day. Um, it's, it's hard being here. Um, but at the same time, it's 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 fun. The boys, uh, you got a good support group here. It's good to be with these guys. Um, there's a lot of us that are in the same boat, and uh, obviously we're missing our families. But uh, we know we're here for for a reason, and um, you know we got uh, we got our rocks back home, taking care of our kids. So it's uh, it's been good. Ben Kuzma, Post Media. Uh, question for Jordy. You've been around the game a long time, and in Montreal you played with a great uh, defenseman in Weber. Um, how amazed are you at what Quinn Hughes has been able to do, not only as a rookie, uh, but as a Calder Trophy finalist, a guy who logged nine minutes in the third period last night uh, when you guys lost Edler? Yeah, that, that kid is – it's incredible to watch him. Um, I've played with some good players, and uh, – you know, he's he's right up there with one of the best I've, I've ever seen personally. Um, we were talking to a few guys last night after the game, and it's it's just scary that you're that we say that that kid's going to get better. Um, I don't know how that's possible because he's so good already, but it's going to be scary in a few years when he is better and older and uh, dominating this league. Stephen Wino, Associated Press. Hey, George, just following up on Greg's question, I'm curious, kind of, can you walk through kind of what the process was for you getting into the bubble? Did you have to charter a flight and kind of what were the hoops you had to jump through with quarantine and, and, and was it all worth it? Uh, yeah, definitely worth it. Um, it's awesome being here. It's awesome playing with the guys, uh, battling in the trenches with them. Um, 
I had to uh, I had to go home and uh, deal with the family stuff. And and when I got back here, I just uh, I flew commercial, but uh, had to do a four day quarantine in my room. Couldn't leave. Had to test every day. Had to do four negative tests. Um, had uh, four more days of skating on my own with uh, one of the coaches. And then on that eighth day, eighth, ninth day, I was allowed to be back with the guys. So um, it needed to be done. Uh, there, wasn't, uh, there wasn't a chance I was going to miss the, the birth of my, uh, my daughter. So um, it was definitely worth going home. And uh, I, would, uh, I would say that quarantine was long, but it, uh, it was worth it. Josh Clipperton, Canadian Press. Hey guys, this is for anyone who may feel passionate about it, but we're, we're in the first round of the playoffs. It's, you guys have already been, you know, playing playoff kind of hockey in the last, you know, month almost. I'm just wondering, there's talk about maybe expanding the playoffs at some point to 20 or 24 teams of the play in. What do you guys think of that? And even if you're for or against it, can you see it happening at some point? Who was the question for, sir? Sure, either one of you guys. Whoever oh. <laughs> I don't have an opinion. <laughs> just trying here to win the Stanley Cup, so um, that's what we're focused on. Next up, we have Jim Morris, CBC. Uh, Jordy, uh, normally in playoffs, there's a lot of travel back and forth, and particularly the longer the series go, the more air miles and traveling do. Being in the bubble, is there maybe an advantage, maybe one of the few advantages of the bubble? You don't have that. I mean, even after the back-to-back games, you were just there. You didn't have to get up, go anywhere again. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the travel gets gets long and hard during the playoffs. Um, and obviously, it's a bit different with the fans when when a team takes a penalty and the and the home team's uh, going on the on the power play and the and the building's rocking. It's it's, uh, it gives you a little energy, so it's, it's a little bit different. Um, but uh, at the same time, it's kind of nice that uh, you just, uh, you're all stuck in one area and you get the, the so-called home team, but at the same time, there's no fans there, so it doesn't really feel like it. So, um, you know, it, it is what it is. We're, uh, we're just playing and having fun. Back to Ian McIntyre, Sportsnet. Hi, this is uh, for Troy. You guys, good game, bad game, you have to park it and move on because that's what, that's what your job is. But when you have a game like last night and win it the way you did with a group of so many players who have never experienced playoffs until this month, how does that, can that help the team moving forward? Does that become like a resource or something in the memory bank that you guys can build on and draw on? In the future yeah uh, I think it definitely gives us confidence and some belief within our group but um, like you said it's it's a playoff so you move on game from game um, and you're only as good as your last shift but I think our group could have been in a hole there after losing two games but we didn't roll over we brought our a game last night and we played as well as we could and uh, we have to follow that up in game six Farhan Lalji TSN uh, this one for Elias. Uh, you guys have already eliminated one team at Minnesota in your first opportunity. Um, can you draw on that going into this game here, the importance of, you know, playing your best and eliminating them and taking care of it now? And, and what do you expect it, uh, from the Stanley Cup champions? How different will it be against them? Um, it's definitely going to be a tough game six. Um, they're a good, good team. They play hard. Uh, they're physical. They're skillful. They play with speed. So... Uh, when we like game three and four, when we were a little off, we they scored on us and won, won two games. So I think you just gotta continue on, on yesterday's game um, and um, hopefully win games next. Ed Willis, Post Media. Yeah, it, it's for Troy. Troy, uh, was it my imagination or was Marky more aggressive playing the puck uh, last night? And, and d- did that help? Um, yeah, it definitely helps us D-men when our goalies play the puck. Um, you know, it's not as predictable for the forecheck coming down on you. And uh, a lot of the times when the puck's dumped in deep, they're going to be changing. So anytime Mark can get up quick, it's it's going to be beneficial for us. But um, yeah, it helps in the long run. Ben Kuzma, Post Media. 
A question for Troy. Uh, being a hometown guy, playing for your hometown team, I mean, there's an added dimension that comes with that. Uh, you can embrace it. It certainly comes with a lot of pressure. What did you make of Jake's game last night? Because obviously consistency and a trust level with a coach are of paramount importance. I'm just curious uh, what you thought uh, about Jake's effort last night. He played well. Obviously, he chipped in. and um, On the back end, we kind of just worry about ourselves and let the forwards complain to each other. But um, I don't know. I noticed him out there, obviously, with PD at different times and with Millsy. So he was getting good opportunities to, to play with uh, some skill guys. And uh, he took advantage of that. And, this time of the year, that's huge when you can get a contribution from anybody on your team. Brendan Bachelor, Sportsnet 650. Yeah, this question's for Jordy. Um, just wondering what the mentality was when Alex Edler went down. And I know Travis said last night that you guys might have thought that he would come back, but uh, how the five of you really approached that third period and, and got the job done in the end. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's like any time when someone goes down and isn't on the bench, you, you're worried about him. Um, obviously, it's in the back of your head that uh, you're wondering if he's going to come back. But um, you know, the, the five guys that are out there just got to step up their game. You're going to get more ice time and uh, you're going to be out there in critical situations. So you just you take advantage of uh, of the situation. And uh, we were all hoping Eddie was going to uh, Eddie was going to come back. Um, he was half dressed when we came back into the room after, so he's fine and ready to rock. And we'll take a final question from Nick Ferris, the score. Hey, Troy, just curious to get your thoughts. Uh, sort of a broad question. What do you think makes Bo Horvat such a capable leader? And, you know, what have his leadership and his sort of play overall meant to you guys throughout the series? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of layers to it. I think Bo's super mature for his age and. Um, he's been in Vancouver for five, six years now and kind of brings the older guys together with the younger guys. And at the same time on the ice, he just kind of leads by example. And, um, uh, the start of this series, he really took the series by the, by the bull, by the horns and, um, led the charge. And I think since then he's continued to play super well and everybody's kind of followed suit and hopped on his back. So, uh, that's what a leader does and it's what you want in your leader. So uh, we're happy to have him.